through. Or that should be coming through. Let me know. How are you today? I am doing wonderful. Thank you for asking. I hope you're doing well, too. The show is going awesome. We, uh, people are asking great questions. Um, uh, everything's gone well so far. So, yeah, <laughs> everything's good. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get out of your way. It's all yours. Um, I can see you. I can hear you. And I'm here if you need me. Terrific. Thanks so much. Welcome, everyone. Good evening. It's five o'clock here in Manhattan. And with the time zone change, it is pitch black dark out right now at five o'clock. Now that I'm talking to you, we had daylight savings time yesterday. So it is a very interesting time to trade the U.S. stock market. And of course, I'm here to talk to you about trading, about making money, and specifically about shorting. So we're going to talk about making money fast shorting. If you have questions as we go along, I can see them in the chat. If you want to ask me questions as we're going through, that's fine. This is me. If anybody doesn't know me, I appear on TV. I talk about the stock market. I talk about economic issues that come up. And again, all of these things are related. If you have questions, you can always go to my website at www.thestockswish.com. You can also email me at melissa at thestockswish.com or call me at 929 3200 gap. So again, I appear on TV mostly to talk about the stock market. Where do I think the market is going today, tomorrow, next week? Again, we're living in very interesting times. We had quite a bit of a rally. I'd say <coughs> almost a few power trend days in the last week and a half. And now today we've seemed to stall. So it'll be interesting to see really where the market goes between now and even Friday. But trading is a great job. Trading is a great job. It really offers a lot of freedom. And one of the reasons that I like to trade and why I'm interested in trading the market is because of the fact that I don't have to be chained to my desk for 40, 50, 60 hours a week. So when I first started trading, I actually was doing mortgages and I worked a lot of hours. And then I got into the stock market and one of the reasons was I wanted to switch careers and I didn't want to work as many hours. Not only is the market only open from 9.30 to 4, but I focus on the morning trade. So I'm really pretty much done trading within the first hour of the day. So you don't have to be even at your desk during the full time the market is open. And of course, you also get weekends off. So this is a picture that I took, actually. It looks like a postcard. It's a picture of Central Park. I live in Manhattan along the park. And ever since I moved to the park, I have such an appreciation now for Central Park and for nature. And it's so nice to be able to trade in the morning and then go outside and enjoy the fall and, and the park and everything that Manhattan has to offer. And obviously, if you live somewhere and you want to go golfing in the afternoon or spend time with your children or whatever the case may be, you have that freedom as a trader, specifically as a day trader, that you can do other things with your life. Because again, this is not an eight hour a day job, but you've got to make money. And you have one goal when you trade, and that one goal obviously is to make money. So a lot of people attempt to trade the market and they fail because they don't know what to do. But really, why do people fail? They fail because they don't have a successful strategy. And I'm here to tell you that you can be successful trading. So this is a video, I actually have a video on YouTube. If you wanna to go to my YouTube at the Stock Swoosh, of a woman that, that did my class many years ago. She is a full-time trader. When she came to me, she never traded before in her life. So people always ask me, what if I don't know anything about the market? You can learn from the ground up. And when she started with me, she was working two jobs. Then she quit the one job. Then she went part time. And now she is just full time trading and she quit both her jobs. So it may take time for you to get where you want to be. But I'm telling you that you can get there. I'm telling you that you can do it. And that the reality is that you don't have to take forever to do it. I think that so many people are at this for so many years. And then after a while, they just kind of, they keep trading. They keep losing money, but they never really, they never really believe that they're actually going to make it. But I'm telling you that you can make it. You can. I see a hello there from Alan. Good to see you. And anybody else, you can chat in the room. So again, getting back to what I was saying, many people find trading success elusive. Why? They just don't have a whole idea of what to trade. They have no idea. They don't have a system. They don't have a system to make money. They have no idea. I get up in the morning and I have a whole list of stocks I want to trade. 
I have them all figured out, a whole list of things I wanna trade before the market even opens. And how am I able to do that? Using my strategy. So I get ready in the pre-market. I make a list of things I want to do or things you know I'm going to watch as a watch list, so to say. And I put in also the stats here. I don't have time to go over all of this, but this is all the trades that we've done in the day trading room so far this year, 2023, through, this is actually, I have to update this. This is through the beginning of October. But 450,701 to date stats in the day trading room. This is day trading on margin equity trades. So my day trade room is a day trade room. We're calling the trades live in and out of the room quickly. And if you're interested in a trial of the trading room, you can email me as well for a free one week trial. These are the stats for the options newsletter. So I risk more money in my options. That's one of the reasons why <clears throat> the stats here are more 1.739920 million for the year to date for options. And this is because I'm risking more of my options trades. One of the reasons I'm risking more in my options trades is because I want to hold overnight and I want to take larger positions to get bigger moves in stocks in the market. And again, you can trade options even with one contract with a small risk if you want. You do not need a margin account. Now, I get this question all the time. The room is not an options room. The room is a day trade room. The options is an options newsletter. So if you want to sign up, if you want to do options with me, you would sign up for the newsletter and that's what you would do if you wanted to get my options trades, just so you know. So anyways, we're going to go through and we're going to talk about some of these trades. But before I even get started, I want to talk about this. Let me just move this here. Trading really takes a positive attitude. So again, as I said, I live in New York City. So the New York City Marathon, the 2023 Marathon was yesterday. So it's the first Sunday in November. I did not run in the marathon, but I was a spectator of the marathon and it was an unbelievable experience for me yesterday to watch the marathon and watch people go through. So if you, if you could have watched it on ESPN, it was actually on ESPN. But it was, it was so motivational, so inspirational to watch people yesterday run this race. It's 26.1 miles. It starts in Staten Island. They go over the Brooklyn Bridge, which is a famous scene. And people train for months, some for years to run the race. Some people don't train, they just want to run it. It's their dream, they want to do it. I saw old people, young people, uh, skinny people, fat people. I saw people from every country, 153 countries, 50 states were, were there yesterday. 50,000 people ran this race. They had a wheelchair division. It started out the race where people were in these, the, the, with, were in, were, were actually started the race and moved their arms through 26.1 miles. And they were the first round, then it was the women, then it was the, the man that won, who actually broke a world record. It was, it was just unbelievable. And I watched it, I watched it all uh, yesterday, it was the whole day. So the, it started at 8 a.m. and like the last people came through like around eight o'clock at night and I could, I could see the whole thing because where they rounded the bend into the final stretch was right where I live. And I got tons of videos, which you can see on YouTube. I didn't even have time to post them all. But yesterday was so inspiring, so inspiring to watch these people. By the people at the end were the most inspiring to me because they were not professional runners. So there's different waves. There's like five waves when you run. Like obviously the people that won were very, very fast runners. But the people towards the end were barely getting into the into the end. I mean, they could like I took videos again. I have an untied to post it like they're towards the end. People were carrying people over over to the end, over the finish line. Like and there's one person that was hang, hanging on the edge of the gate and somebody came up, you know, just total stranger came up and helped him move along. Because by the time you get to the point, uh, but the time you get to the point where you enter Central Park and you go through to the finish line, the finish line is at, um, you know, in Central Park, you've got to make it, you've got to cross. If you don't go over the finish line, you do not get a medal. And everybody wants a medal. This is a, this is a, this is where people were taking the pictures at the step and repeat. But it was so inspiring just to see the people the last couple hours, people that could barely walk that were pushing through. 
And you know, the thing about trading is so many people trade the market and so many people give up, quit, want to quit. And, and what I found, and again, I've had the business now for, for 11 years going on 12, where I've taught people what I know. I've been trading for 15 going on 16. But it's like so many people trade, risk money every day or every week trading the market, and they have the shittiest attitude you would ever, ever find. They'd never make it to the end of a race. They quit before they'd even give up. And what's crazy to me is people trade and risk money and actually lose money and they have a crappy attitude. How do you think you're gonna make it in this business if you don't have a positive attitude? You need a positive attitude. And we all need inspiration. The motivation should be to make money. That should be your motivation to do it. For me, it was a combination of money and I really wanted a different career. I was so tired of doing mortgages and dealing with the crap with banks trying to get loans approved. Again, this was 2007, 2008 when mortgage companies were going under. So I was extremely motivated to change careers. I was working way too many hours and I wanted to work less hours. And I was also really motivated by money. But there's far too many people that attempt to successfully trade the stock market that have a terrible attitude. So you say, well, why do so many people lose? They don't have a good strategy and they have a terrible attitude. And they may say they have a good attitude because they trade every day, but they do not. They would never be able to run the 26.1 miles that the people did yesterday where they're barely getting over the line. They would quit. They would quit right at the end. And you can't. You can't. So yesterday, just watching people, and again, I caught, them, I caught people on video. I mean, it was, it was in, insane. I just haven't had a chance to put all the videos up on YouTube, but it was extremely motivating for me because in a world and an industry where so many people give up, so many people quit, so many people have a negative attitude, it, it, was, it was motivating for me because again, part of my job as a teacher, as a trading educator, is not just to teach people my gap strategy, um, it, it's also to motivate people to keep going. Because again, everybody has a different situation. Everybody has a different circumstance. Everybody has a different amount of money that they're risking. Everybody has a different learning curve. You know, so you have to have a positive attitude. But in order to become successful, you actually also, besides positive attitude, you need a system and you need an edge. And for me, it is shorting. It is shorting. But again, there's only, you know, one winner on the opposite side of every train. Just like the marathon, there was only one winner yesterday. And again, another, another similarity, I was thinking about this too, because like I said, there was different waves in the marathon. The guy that won was so, so, so fast, like two hours and some minutes or something. Then there was a couple guys that were in the original pack with him, the fast guys that were right after him. Then the amount of time from those fast few people to the first wave of people was a long time. And then the amount of time from the, that wave of people till all the rest of the people up until eight o'clock was far, far, far off. And it's just very similar comparing it to trading because again, you have people at the top that are making tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of tons of money. And then you have the people in the middle that are making a little bit or maybe break even. And then you have all the rest that are losing money trading. And again, the dichotomy between the winner and the loser is so far, so vast, so wide. Even though yesterday I can't, cons everyone that finished that race was a winner as far, as far as I was concerned to make that distance. But, but it was 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. at night, which was 12 hours. So the similarities with trading is again, everyone wants to make it, you know, you're, you have to look at it as something that you have to keep pushing forward, pushing forward. It may be 10 steps forward and two steps back, but you need a good system in order to succeed and you have to follow it daily. And for me, it's gaps. And that's what we're gonna talk about. I'm focused on momentum, I'm focused on volatility, I'm focused on shorting, and I'm focused on the fast trades because I like the idea of having the rest of the day to myself, like I said. I also like the idea of shorting because of something called panic. So let's talk a little bit about what is a gap. A gap is a difference between the close and the open. This is a chart of the SPY. Back here in September, you saw a gap in the market. So a four o'clock close was here in the SPY, a 9.30 open was here. So a gap is a difference between the close and the open. In the case here of this, this was a gap down, the market fell. There are also bullish gaps in the market where the market gaps up, closes at one price, opens at a higher price. 
That happened in here. This was early October. Market closed here, open higher, rally, okay? So I try to focus on gaps and specifically bearish gaps, but I'm looking for momentum. I want the gap to go fast. I want to make money. I want it to go really, 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 really fast. Hopefully it'll go within five, 10 minutes if we're doing a day trade. And if I'm doing an option, I'm doing the weekly options. But again, if someone said to you, if you could make $1,000 in five minutes, you'd rather do that than make $100 in five minutes. I mean, it's just, it's just like a no brainer. And again, so many people are scalping. They're trying to get 10 cent moves, 20 cent moves, 25 cent moves. I'm trying to get a dollar, $2, $3 or more. Okay. I really, really want to get, you know, lots and lots of fast, big moves. And I'm typically not doing things for pennies. But again, getting back to it, the key to day trading stocks successfully is using a system and trade a system that sets up daily. So again, I'm looking to one that sets up daily. That's what I do. And particularly that doesn't really need the market. Because again, if you, if you need the market, then you better read the market right every day. And that's very difficult. Even I don't get the market right every day. Now, I do get the market right a lot because the market gaps almost every day and then I'm reading the gaps in the market. But I don't trade the market every day. I don't even want to or try to trade the market every day. There are trades that I do in the market, and you'll see some in this lecture, but it, they don't always set up to be what I call predictable. But my system is called the Golden Gap System, and you can use it to trade options. You can use it to short in an option, which is what? It's called a put. So a put is a short. So you can, we buy puts and sell them, buy calls and sell them, okay? And again, if you're day trading in the room, we're on calling the trades live in the room, we're trading on margin, we're all short 2,000 shares of something, you have to have a margin account to do that, all right? Now I'm gonna go over, this was one week here, and I could have put in any, any week. Um, but I put in one week of trains from the options newsletter, the week expiring October 20th. This is an average week. It may seem like a busy week. There was 15 trades. This was earnings season. We've had weeks where we've had more trades than this. We've had weeks where we've had less. And I'm using an advanced trader risk because that's what I trained. And that was the stats I showed you earlier. You can use a beginner risk. You could risk $500 per trade. You could risk $250 per trade. Well, some trades you maybe won't be able to do if we do like a NVIDIA and it costs $15 for, for one contract, yes. But most of the trades we do, I would say, are between a dollar and $4 per contract. So I'm gonna go over a whole week here of trades with you. And then we're gonna go over some stuff at the end. If you have questions as we're going along, you can ask me. But the win ratio for this week, and again, these were all gaps, all based on gaps. We had 12 winners, zero break-even, three losers, and 15 trades. The average return investment was 136% with an $8,000 per trade average risk. And I know that's a lot, but again, you can risk less. But the profits for this week was $162,100. This shows you the potential that you can make if you can get to this point in your trading career. And again, I think this is important. I think this is important to motivate people. If money doesn't motivate you to trade, then you need to do a, a status check because trading is about making money because you're going to lose if you're not motivated to make it. Now, the, while there may be other reasons that you want to trade and you're motivated to trade, as I told you, I wanted to cha tra change careers and I wanted to work less. The fact is you have to be driven by the money to do it because it is, it's a zero sum game. Like I was explaining earlier, you want to win. There's one winner and one loser. Now, how do I come up with these picks? How did I come up with the 15 picks? And again, there were a few that lost, and we're gonna go over them here. I get up in the morning, my process is I rate the gap. I get up in the morning, I rate the gap using the checklist. So the checklist is what you would learn in my class. It is a 26 point checklist where you rate the gap. If the gap rates 20 points or more, okay, I take it in the direction of the gap. So in other words, if the gap's down and rates 20 points or more, I will buy a put. If the gap's up and rates 20 points or more, I will buy a call. I'm looking to trade momentum. So I have my whole list of trades, everything picked out in the pre-market. When I see the gap, everything rated in before the open. So many of the trades that I call on the options news that are sent in the pre-market before the open. Now, as far as the day trades, I'm just doing the day trades live in the room. If you're in the room, you gotta be there live to get the trade. The day trades are not emailed to you. You don't have to be in the room to get the options trades. They are emailed to you. I may send a trade out at 8 a.m. 
you can't do that options trade until 9.30 after the open. Someone says something about the Boston Marathon. Yeah, if you're in Boston and you, and you watch it or you ever ran it, again, another very motivating race. Any, anything that challenges yourself to accomplish something or do something that you never did before. And again, getting back to relating this to people who trade the market that's tell me, I hear people's sob stories. I hear people's stories. I can empathize with people. But if you tell me you've been attempting to trade the market for 20 years, 15 years, 10 years or more, and you're not successful, what is going on? You obviously do not have the strategy that's successful. That's number one. Or number two, you are not motivated enough to make it happen for yourself and do it. And something has to change. You can get motivated like that, okay? You, it doesn't take weeks and months and years to get motivated. And again, you could say, well, I don't have the money to do this, I don't have the money to trade, I don't have the money to ba -da -ba do. Listen, if you're motivated, you will find the money that you need to take my class. You will find the money that you need to open up a trading account and trade. You will get motivated and open up an options account with $2,000, which is all that you need and the bare minimum to trade options. You would, you would only be doing a small position size if you did that, and you will build it from there. Said so everyone's just said, well, I wanna have 100 grand before I even start. Okay, whatever that is. Meanwhile, again, weeks and months and years of your life go by and you don't get anywhere with it. You know, the other thing, again, I just, I don't wanna get too off topic here, but the other thing about yesterday that was so amazing, and again, you can really see it in my videos of YouTube of the runners, is that there, there is one moment in time, like right now tonight, it's 524 and we are here together and I'm here live with you. And Jeff, you can ask me a question and I will answer it live. We will never have this moment again. This moment right now is the most powerful moment in the present, in the present moment. And this moment will never exist again. And it is very similar to when you're running a marathon and you've got to do it and it's only one day. And it's very similar when you have opportunities in the stock market to trade or take positions or put positions on or make money, make a lot of money, or even if you make a decision that creates you a loss for you, where you, where you take a trade that you don't know what you're doing and you lose. So, you, you know, live moments, the present moment is so powerful. And so many people get so caught up, particularly traders, in the past and mistakes they've made and decisions that they've made that they've regret and trades they've taken and losses. If you're living in the past with your trading, you are, you are working against yourself. And the sooner that you stop working against yourself is, is, the, is again the first step to the beginning of your trading career which you could actually be successful because opportunity exists every single day in the market where you can make a lot of money or you can lose. And the choice is yours. The choice is yours. So, I mean, again, it's, it's so incredible for people to understand this. And again, all of this should help motivate you to actually do it, to actually get somewhere, to actually be that person that you want to be. And it doesn't have to take forever and it doesn't have to take a long time and it doesn't have to take a million years for you to get to the point to make this kind of money either. You know, when I was started out trading and when I, when I first started out, I did not know what I was doing and I had to teach myself. That was a process of three years. You don't have to do that. You pay me for my class, you get the information in one weekend and you learn it. Then I'm here to answer questions for you. That's invaluable, invaluable because I didn't have that. I didn't have that access. I didn't have you know one person to go to to ask questions about because I created the system myself. You know. Anyways, let's go over the trades here. So this is what the newsletter looks like, okay? Let me just move this here. This trade I sent out at 10.05 in the morning. I, I call it the LMT calls. I give the symbol, I give it the strike, I give it the expiration date. The type is a call or put, okay? And this trade, so again, what was the date? Let me just see here, at 10.09. So this we went long, actually. Even though I preferred a short, we did go long here. This had a move, rallied. This was a positive trade. This was a small one here. I held it as long as I could. I was trying to hold it, trying to hold it. I, this did not work out the way that I thought, even though I made money in this trade and I exited with a profit. I wanted this to go much, much bigger than it did. I will give something till almost the very last day, the last day to try to go. I gave this, I gave this a long time, days actually, and then I got out of it. So this trade was positive. You would have made money in this, a stock rally, but it didn't go the way that I anticipated when I first, first did the trade. Then I did BA. This was on October 9th, same day, October 9th. I did the 185 puts again that expired the 20th. I like to do 
the weekly options. And again, depending on the date, if it's the middle of the week, I might do the farther week out. So 10, 9, here was the BA. Uh, where are we? 10, 9, oh, here, October. So again, this was one that we did that started to look like it was going to go and then flipped, lost in the BA, held it into the very last day, ran it into the 20th. It rallied, then dropped, and I ended up losing in this. Now, I got out of it with something. I didn't lose the whole thing in this. It wasn't a total bust. You can see how the stock fell, and it was late. So again, timing is very important with options. I was early in this trade. We did another BA, which I'm going to go over here later. But again, I get out of it with a loss. Not a full loss, but I still lost in this trade. Then we did Oracle. This was the biggest trade of this week. We did the 109 puts in Oracle, 1011. Uh, 10, 11 was here. So I, get, I did the 109s. You see where the stock is trading here, right around 110. Do, 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 fell off a cliff. So this one went the very last day. It was an absolutely, absolutely huge trade. It cost $1.50, 60 contracts was a risk of 9,000, sold at 725, profit was 34,500, return on investment was 383%. This was a huge straight. So let's just pretend you had one contract of this or 10. Let's say, let's say you spent $1,500. Look at what you could have made, 383%. And this is in you know a couple of days, a week and a half, not even. You would have taken the trade here and you would have got out of it here. That's the type of trade that can also make your whole account if you have a small account where you can double or triple, quadruple your account. Again, and that doesn't mean risking some absurd size. It's because of the return on investment that this trade offered. And again, we were talking about shorting. We were talking about momentum. What happened to Oracle? This was a put. This was a put. This fell. The stock fell. This is a big fat red bar. The stock got dumped. It was a dump. And the movement again is to the downside. Okay. One of the reasons I like to short is again, you get big moves to the downside. Why? Panic comes in when stocks fall. This was a gap down. But again, it continued. We were ready in the trade. We were actually already in the trade at the time. Then we did the BA puts, the 190s, but this was after that original date, 10, 12, uh, which was here. So this one here was the one that was really uh, the good one. Stock closed here, gap down, fell, dropped, boom. You see it? Again, here is the selling. Here is the stock falling. So again, we did the 190s. You can see this. So again, so many people, well, I want to do options because I can open up a small account. I don't need a margin account, but I don't understand the time value. We're trading momentum. Whether you pay a little more or pay a little less or hold a little bit longer or get out this point, this was a positive trade. You couldn't have screwed this trade up. If you got in and here and out of it here, you made money. If you got in and here and out of it here, you made money. If you got in and here and out of it into the drop here, you made money. You couldn't have screwed this trade up. The stock price dropped. In fact, you could have held it down the very last day, which I didn't because the trade was up already, got out of it, and made the most. It came down in here to 180 on the last day. So this, this was another really, really cheap one, in my opinion, $1.60. For one contract, 60 contracts was a risk of 9600 sold at 750 369%. This is a profit of $35,400 with this risk. So again, you could have bought one and paid $160, okay, which is $160. And you could have sold it at 750 and this isn't even the best price out, and you could have made 369%. And anybody that trades should be able to take one contract at this price, you know. But if your risk is even like 500 or something, again, that was a put, that was a short. 10, 12 in the afternoon, I called Tesla, the 260s. Again, another put. Let's take a look at 10, 12, what Tesla did. Back, 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 here we go. This was a nice one here, close here, gap down, boom, and there it went. Look at it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful train. Again, this is one I get out of on the 19th. You could have held it to the 20th. You could have held it to the very last day and made more money. It came all the way down to 210. This went 50 points through the strike from the point that I called the train. So this is expert, expert professional technical analysis to look at this to see it. It is my gap rating method that allows me to see on this particular date that Tesla will have the momentum to the downside and then take the trade and do it. So this was another really good one. This wasn't cheap though. 875 for one, 
10 contracts, 87.50, sold at 38. Again, could have held it into the last day and made more. Profit was 29,250, return investment 334%. So again, if you want to do one contract, you would have to be able to risk at least 875. Or what you could have done if you wanted to risk less, you could have actually did a contract farther away, farther away than that. That's another idea. Then we did do the market the same day, 126, the QQQs, the 369 strike. Again, this was a put. So 1012, let's take a look at it here. Where are we? Again, boom, mm, got the drop. Again, here's the momentum. The momentum here in the market is to the downside. We got it. We were already in it. We were already in the market short. Okay, again, a put is a short. So again, people want to trade and get a little bit here, a little bit there. You want momentum. You want a big move. This is a big move. You get in a trade a good spot. Whether you hold it or get out soon is neither here nor there. You're making money. You can take something you get out of half. You can hold the whole thing. You can even add. That's an advanced concept, which I'm not going to go over here today. But cost was 345. Number of contracts was 25. 8625 risk. Again, sold at 9. 13,875 return on investment was 161% for this trade in the market. We did the 369 puts. You could do the daily expirations of the market. I'm not doing those, but you could. Same day. Did the spy again saw the market was going to drop and fall, which it did. We did the 434s. Let's find that here again. Boom, there it goes. And again, this is a sell off. You're short, you want to be short. So, again, if you think the market's higher here, we were already short. We were down in trades before they went. So, I was in the trade, held it through, rallied. The trade was down made all the money then stayed with the trade again this is expertise this is the point of coming to me and learning what to do this is all about the right knowledge this is how you make this kind of money you have to know what to do if you're going with a crowd of traders you're not going to know what to do when you're going to lose and that's above and beyond the negative attitude stuff we talked about earlier cost was three dollars and eighty cents number of contracts 20 with seventy six hundred dollar risk sold at 750 Profit 7,400, return investment 97%. Again, a nice trade in and out. Could have held this the last day too if you wanted to. Again, you take a chance when you do that when you're up that much in a trade. Then we did Netflixes. Again, we did this one, 360s. Let's see where this one went. So 10, 12, here. And again, beautiful drop. Got it? Do, mm, mm, mm. Drop down. And there it was. And you see where it came down to. Went through the strike, through 360, through 350. Came all the way down close to 340. And you're out. And you're out. Trading, you're in, you're out in the day trades in a couple of minutes. And an option, you get the move, get out. You get the move, get out. You chunk it. You chunk it out. How do you make money in the market? You get in and get out. Oh, this one I held. I screwed this up. I lost in this one because I held it too long. Mm, that was my fault. Here's what happened. You would have made money in this if you got out. I held it. So what happened here, uh, this was positive. Then it had earnings, and I held the trade. So that was my error. I held it, and I lost in the whole thing. Look. I forgot that one. But this trade was a good trade. <laughs> I was up in it. I didn't get out. So again, you kind of have to decide what you want to do. I thought this was going to continue lower. So that's rare, but I was up a good amount in that trade, and then I lost in it. I held it through. I held it through. I was My expectation was that it was a 50-50, that it could go in my direction further through the number, and I decided to hold it. But what you could have done here with this one is you could have actually got out of half, booked half, and then held the other half. But this was a personal decision here. But this was a positive trade. But I'm showing you my results. I lost in it. The stock had earnings this night, gapped up, uh, and then it failed. So that is the price that you pay. But this was positive. It was expensive. I'm just thinking back in my mind what was going on in my head. I, I think I wanted to hold this because it was just, so, it cost so much like two weeks ago I think that's the part of me thought it was going to be lower in the earnings that was number one and then and then also it was just so expensive but that that trade was positive for some people who trade with me that got out
The conservative thing to do was to get out, actually. IBM, we did the 140 puts. Again, expired this day. We did this on the 13th, 9-11. 9-11... Ten thirteen. Let's find it. Oh, here. We did IBM. This was earnings. Stop close here. Gap down. Dropped. Boom. Fell. So again, we did the one forties. So we did it. Got the drop. You could have got out here. Or you could have held it into the drop here. This gap down here. This particular morning dropped in here into one thirty six. Again, I, I'm someone that does tend to try to hold my options a little bit more. So I get out of the day trades fast, and I try to hold the options a little bit. Dollar fifty was the cost for this. 50 contracts, 7,500, sold at 3. Profit was 7,500. Good trade. Again, if you can't watch your trades for the targets, even though I give targets in the newsletter, you can just get out when you're up at 50% or 100%, put a sell order. It's a day order. It's a can it'll cancel out if it doesn't hit by 4. Then we did the BA again, the 180s on the 13th. This was another one here. You see here we did the lower strike. So again, this dropped, fell, fell into 180, got the drop. So again, that one was a nice one. But no, I lost in this one. Oh, I didn't get out of this one either. Boy, I was a pigger this, this week. I forgot that too. No, I got out of this with a partial loss. Ah, I should have got out of that when I was up too. This was a good, uh, this first drop in here and the second day was the best exit here. I'm just looking at this. You see that? Or even here on this day here. See it? But I'm losing the whole thing. Uh, what about 365 cues we did on the 13th? Here, this was the one we were talking about. I did a different strike. Different day, different strike, fell, dropped. Again, same move, same downward momentum. This was not expensive, but $3.40 for one. 25 contracts, risk was 8,500, sold at 950. Profit was $15,250. Return on investment, 179%. It was a good trade. So we've been talking about this as far as you know, getting out with pause or whatever. I think you have to decide what camp you're on. So like I told you, how I manage trades is I'm trying to hold them for a little bit longer with my options. Fast trades for the day trades, hold options a little bit longer. As you see here on some of these trades, I was up in some of these trades and the options and I didn't get out and they reversed against me. So you have to decide what camp you're in because some of these trades that I got huge, huge moves in you know, 200, 300%, almost 400% return investment is because I held them. So again, you know, if you decide to do that, you will take losses in some like I did that you were up in. That is a personal choice of something that you want to do. I found that if I take quality trades and I give them a chance to work and hold them a little bit more, I will get something more out of that. It will benefit me more in the long run that the ones that I lose in that I was up in that I will make far greater by holding the ones to get the bigger move, if that makes any sense. Any questions here as I'm going along? Nice presentation. Thank you. Um, then we did the spy. This was late in the day for me, 11.26. We did this. Hey, Melissa? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we do have some questions from YouTube if you want me to, if you have a go chance ahead. for them. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Lewis wants to know, um, do you work in the money only? No, I, some of these are at the money. Yeah. And what indicators do you use to get the entries? I'm not using indicators to get the entries. I'm using the gap, my gap analysis. Like here with this SPY, again, we were talking about a gap. The SPY was on the 1013 here. I'm playing the gap. So I'm playing the gap. It's nothing to do with um, moving averages or indicators or anything else like that. I rate the gap in the morning using a checklist, which is what I teach in the class. And if it ranged 20 points or more, like I said, I will take a trade in the direction of the gap. That trade could be a day trade or that trade could be a put. And going back to the strike question, I will do it at the money or I will do it away from the money. I'm rarely doing things that are in the money. Maybe they seem like they are here with these charts, but rarely am I doing them in the money because I find that those are too expensive. If I, if like if I was, if the market was trading today at 400, I might do an at the money 400 put. If I wanted to short the market, I'm not telling you to short the market tomorrow. I'm just saying, or I might do something that's 
395, where if I see 395 is going to be the target, that I feel like it's going to drop into 395 where it's away from the money. Okay. We're caught up on questions. Oh, oh, oh. Except Douglas just had one. If option trade is up big, do you protect profit by selling an option? I Thanks for the buy, question, Douglas. Yeah, I buy the put and sell it. I buy the call and sell it. I am not selling options. If that is your question, I am not doing that. So All right, you're all caught up. Yeah. Thanks. If, if you want to protect your profits, then what you should do is get out of half. You should get out of half if you or just get out of the whole thing, you know. So again, it I don't use stops for my options. The the risk is the stop. Again, I did this five. This is it. I can't lose any more than this. If I take 25 contracts of this and risk 81, 25, this is my stop. I can't lose any more than this, and I'm not killing it in the middle of it, as you can see. So, I mean, again, if you did 25 contracts, get out of 10, get out of 15, hold the rest. You can't lose then. Anyways, the cost of this was 325, sold at seven, profit was 93.75, return on investment was 115% for this one. Again, a drop in the spy. Um, CVX was a call, if you can even believe it. We did a call in this on the Friday. And again, this was 1013, 1013. And this one, I got out of 1019. So this was 150% return investment. But I gotta be honest with you, this one didn't work as what I thought it would either. So I had a good trade. I was up more than 100%. I got out of the trade, but this this didn't really do what I anticipated either. It was a good trade. It was a positive trade, but it didn't go as big as I thought that it would. So again, you know, you have to book money. You have to watch it. If you're up in a trade the day before the expiration, this was the day before I decided to get out. Uh, then we did the SPY 425s on Friday the, 19th, the 13th. This dropped fell. That was a good trade. This one I got out of the very, very, very last day, which again is rare, but it was up 33%. Then I did the 360s and the Qs and got out of this one the last day too and made 85%. Again, the market was cooperating the last day. So there were some that I was up in, but barely and some it was down or flat and going into the Wednesday of the week and I just wanted to hold them and I was up so much and the rest of them and her got out of stuff that I decided to hold it. So, you know, I will try to do a video on YouTube, a beginner risk for, for this week. I have other weeks on YouTube. I'm trying to do the whole month of October. It's just, there's too much going on in my life right now. I don't know if I'll get to that, but I will try. But anyways, to show you how, so like we were talking about being motivated, something that can motivate you to do it. Whether it's half this risk that I'm taking, whether it's more risk that I'm taking, whether it's the same risk that I'm taking, whether it's everything that you can do for yourself, it's the idea of being motivated. I do not show my checklist because that's what I charge money for and teach in the class, whoever asked that. That is what you'd pay me for in the class, which we'll talk about at the end. Um, as far as, again, technical indicators, we talk about that more in the class, but I make the decisions based on the ratings. Um... I think that's it. If you want to learn more about candlesticks or charts or any of that, you should ask Jeff. Um, Jeff has all of his programs with the charting. And again, that's very important to have live charts as well. So getting into the end here, just a couple more minutes here. I'm just going to talk about how my niche is shorting and how you really, I think, need a niche to be successful. I'm looking at institutional money when I'm making the decisions and the choices that I make about the market or about stocks or anything else that I'm that I'm doing, I'm looking at something and I'm trying to determine if institutional money is gonna sell it, in which case I'd wanna short the stock, or if they're gonna buy it, in which case I'd wanna go long the stock. We went long Microsoft. It was you know, one of those ones that got bought. That was the recent long that we did. But again, my niche is shorting, okay? So how do you make money shorting? You make money shorting when the stock price drops and buying a put is a short. And again, I'm not selling the put. I'm buying it and then selling out of it, that's it. And I'm not doing fancy dancing, you know, options, configurations. But anyone could short. Anyone could short it all. You could buy a put, like I said, in, in an IRA account, in a retirement account. You could buy a put in a cash account. You need a margin account to short as a day trade. And for the day trades I do, I'm in and out very, very quickly early in the morning. But again, fast day trades are very important. So we are going to talk about a couple of these here. I mean, as far as this goes, okay... This is one that we did. I just want to show you here. This was Tesla. And again, these are small, 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 small. 
but we shorted Tesla on a one minute chart. This was a day trade and we got in, got out. We've been talking about options this whole time, but I day trade every single day. So I wanna show you, this is a trade that I called in the room. I did in a live room, you would do it with me if you were there. I tell you where to get in and where to get out and we're done. And we were done in five minutes. So again, you have to have a margin account to do this. As far as um, another one we did, we did CLX, this was 10.5. Again, very similar. This is a one minute chart where you would get in and get out. And you can see how fast the stock moves, how big the drop is. Again, here's the gap. This is the night before at a one minute chart at four o'clock where the stock was closed at CLX. This was earnings, open in the morning here. And we got in, we shorted it. It was a nice trade. And again, these moves all happen very, very fast because panic comes in fast. Fear creates selling. And how do I make the picks? You, I, the rating system. So you would pay me for the information to learn the rating system. This is what took me three years of my life to figure out. I couldn't tell you it now in an hour if I tried. It's a 14 hour class, 16 hours, one hour break each day for lunch. And this is the meat and potatoes of what I do. You learn my system, you can use it for the rest of your life. I have been teaching people now for 12 years, going on 13. And again, my business is called The Stock Swoosh, but I started trading personally in 2008. I did not know what I was doing. I had no idea. But I started shorting early on, and I started trading gaps early on, and I realized there was something to that. And in fact, I made a lot of money trading gaps and shorting at the beginning. And that's I, that motivated me to try to figure out how to find the best gaps every day. It's the criteria. It's honing it down. You only need one good trade a day to make money. You only need one good option a week, really, to make money, quite frankly. You don't have to do a million trades a week. You don't have to do a million day trades. You do not have to sit at your desk and trade all day or even trade 15 options a week. You only need to get one good thing a day. That is all you need, a couple of trades a week. It's the idea of having a high win ratio, of a high win ratio. That's why I showed you the stats at the beginning. You have to win more than you lose. And that is another critical thing in reference to trading that people just don't get with traders. All traders who trade the market win some days, but they, and they keep going thinking that they're winning, but they're not. They look at their account, their account is down. They gotta refund it. And it's a cycle, it's a vicious cycle until you get out of it. I know because I was in it when I started. I was losing when I started. I did not know what I was doing, but that was the investment that I made in myself and then trading and figuring it out. But gaps are created with large institutional money. That's what makes the gap in the first place. And professional gaps that happen to play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it. By following the 26-point rating system, you have a daily blueprint. It's like a blueprint to follow to pick the stocks. I'm not just picking them out of my head. I like this. I think this is going to work. No. I go through the rating system and rate it, and I go with it. That's it. Again, and if I lose in a trade, it might rate good, and the trade may lose. That's the odds. When you trade the market, you're playing the odds. Again, just like the racers yesterday. The runners yesterday, the men's runners and the women runners. I caught the women. I caught the, I got the one, the girl that won. The women, there were three women. They were neck and neck. Neck and neck yesterday till till Tilly end of the finish line. Any one of them could have won until the girl that pulled ahead that won. So again, it's trading his odds. You have to put the odds in your favor. Sometimes you're gonna lose. And that's the whole point of having to set your risk in something that you can afford. And again, when I do day trades, I do use a stop. It's a limit order stop, it's a hard stop. When I do options, my risk is my stop. And I say if you're worried about a trade and an option, it cut your risk back. But anyways, the system is a blueprint to help you pinpoint institutional money in a stock. And again, it's a checklist. It's a 26-point checklist. It's based on common sense. It's the idea that people get scared. They panic. They panic. People sell. And again, you can have a small account and trade. This Oracle trade, which was the biggest trade this week, I want to show you here. We already talked about it, but I just want to show you if you had a small risk, if you had risked $1,200, you could have risked less than that. But if you had risked $1,200, you would have made $4,600 in that trade. You didn't have to do anything. Take the trade and hold it to the last day. So, I mean, these are the kinds of trades that can really just grow your account if it's small to begin with, which, which people always want. You know, you got five grand in an options account, 10 grand in an options account, and you can make 30% on your account, almost 40% in one trade. 
that really gets you where you need to be to get up to the point to even build it up to have a margin account of 25,000. So again, what should you expect? An average of one to one, we're looking for the 26 points. We talked about this, you need a positive attitude and you really do need to get the proper education because you're not gonna make money if you don't have the right education. You can figure out a system yourself like I did, but that's very expensive, very uh, time consuming and most people will never ever get it. But the point is that you must take calculated risk when you trade and you need a plan of action for what you wanna do. Now I see some questions here I'm gonna answer before I continue. Don't follow the off exchange, don't follow the dark pulls, don't follow anything with that, no, no. Um, I, as far as the day trades, uh, someone's asking about the day trades and options. I call day trades in the room. There are people in the room that are doing my day trades as options. For example, the market, if I short the market and they didn't want to short the market on margin, yes, they're doing the daily expirations of the, in, the, in, the, in the day trade. If I call a day trade and a margin in the same thing, which I don't in every trade, and you're getting the options newsletter and the day trades, you can do both. I do both. If I call um, a day trade and I don't call an option in it, that means I don't think it's going to continue. Therefore, I would do it as a day trade and I would get out when I get out of the day trade. Does that make sense? So that's up to you. If you're saying you want to be in the room, but you want to do options, then you got to get out when I get out. Um, unless I call an option in it. Does a pattern day trade apply in options? You can open up a cash account. You have to set it up as a cash account. If you set it up as a cash account, you're okay. If you set it up as a margin account, then you need 25,000. So yes, you can trade options without a margin account, but you must set it up as a cash account. That you work out with a broker. I'm not a broker. These are all good questions to ask a broker, but you can do it. And there are people trading options with me that actually have their account set up that way. And and again, if you want a referral, let me know. Anyways, really- I have another oh, go ahead. YouTube question. Go ahead. Um, uh, Lewis wants to know how important volatility is for your option trades. If you're, again, volatility is your friend if you're trading it in the right direction. But you may, I'm usually in trades before the volatility has hit. So, you know, there was a couple back there. I don't want to go back because we're running on it. We're running close to time. But where I was in a trade, the trade was in my favor. Then it booped up and I was in a put and then it was against me. And then people were going long. This was in the market a couple weeks ago. And then we were already short. I was down in the trade. And then the volatility went back in my favor and it, and it, and it helped me move to make money. So volatility is actually your friend. But again, if it goes against you in a trade and you've got a week left, if you know what you're doing and you rated the gap and the gap rated good, you should stay the course. And that's why I hold trades out to win or lose. Volatility is your friend. It will help you make money if you're in the right direction. If you're in the wrong direction, you're gonna lose. But if you, whether you have volatility or not, if you're in the wrong direction, you're gonna lose. It doesn't, make, it doesn't matter, if that makes sense. Um, something about 10-4. I don't know what you mean by that, Douglas. Anyways, penny wise and pound foolish. Just really want to quickly bring this up. So many traders that act like this, and again, I'm not British, but they, they get out of trades with pennies and because they're worried about losing dollars. You saw some trades here that I was up a lot and I held them through and I lost. I'm, I'm not saying to do that, but you know, the reality is that people get out to make a couple pennies. They'll risk dollars and they'll make a couple pennies. Then they take cheap price stocks because they think they're gonna make more, like low float stocks, stuff like that. It's things that I will never trade. Or cheap options too. Or they pay for cheap classes or bad, inexpensive classes. They don't think they're bad. They just say, well, this is cheap. Well, I'm gonna spend $100 on this subscription, $500 on this class. They say, well, and then they lose money taking the class. They didn't learn anything. And they also lose money taking the bad trades from whatever class they took or subscription instead of paying for quality education. So it's like a double whammy and people do this. And I mean, again, and people then go and take free trials and then they take trades blind and they lose. They have no idea whether they're doing them or not. not nothing, no nothing about it. And people won't trade expensive stocks when they could make money, really good money with because they don't want to do small size. And then also another mistake, people put the majority of their money in a trading account and spend very little education and it should be the opposite. Yes, you need money to trade, but you have to divide it up. 
again, I only take credit debit cards for the cost of the class, but the fact is you need money to train, but you shouldn't be so worried about spending money on a class that you said, well, I only have this much money to put in the account then, then I can't risk such much. No, if you are someone that has what you would, I would say is a small account, for example, you have to be even more concerned about not having losses, even more concerned about it. So again, you shouldn't be worried about putting a class in a credit card, even at an interest rate of 30%, if you can make 400% in a trade. I mean, it's just like people just don't think when they make decisions about things because they're too small minded. I'm trying to get you to think outside the box and to think in a way that successful people think, wealthy people think, people that make a lot of money. Uh, let me just see here. Um, something about, I don't know anything about that Hanson, uh, so I can't answer that question. Let me just see where we are. This is a 26 point checklist. If you come and learn my class, you will learn a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, big move of the day, early confirmation of the bias of the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. So you learn the entries in the class, the exits in the class, the targets, the 26 points, and how I make the picks. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate what gap to trade each morning. I'm going to teach you how I pick those 15 trades. Oracle, all of them, reading the market. The 26-point checklist predicts the directional bias in a stock or the market. And again, you do not need a general overall broad-based view of how to trade. You only need one strategy, but it has to be good, and it has to have a high win ratio. And again, if your reason for doing this is to make money, you will make money. Go back to the original purpose. If you found yourself lost in your trading, lost in your mind, why the hell are you doing this? Go back to yourself. Why did you start this in the first place? You wanted to make money. You wanted to quit your job. You wanted to retire early. You wanted to have more money coming in to combat inflation and everything else. You wanted to save for a house, whatever it was. Get back to that purpose because if you're trading and losing and it's November, 2023, less than two months from 2024 and if you're down for the year, I don't know if you can come back from the year, but you still have time left and you gotta put that positive face back on yourself. Douglas, I appreciate all your wonderful comments, but you haven't signed up with me and you've been following me a long time and I don't know why you haven't signed up if you love me, honestly. But I appreciate the nice comments. Anyways, it's a checklist. You go through it. This was, this is, this is a great example of a guy and I have tons of people like this. They did the class in, in October. He paid for the class, started trading and made the cost of the class before he took the class. That is not always the case, but he did. He paid ahead of time. He got in the room. He did the trains. He, I mean, it, it's just a win for him, you know. And so he's in the room and he's getting the options trades and he did great. He's somebody that, you know, there's many, many success stories that are out there, but this is a recent one and he was happy to send his picture and just loving the service. So it was, it, you know, he's one of these people that has been following me and, and he jumped in and he did it. So again, the class is called the Golden Gap Course. The class is $69.99. It's November 18th and 19th. It's not this weekend, next weekend. Only two more classes this year. One in November, one in December. I don't have the December dates yet. Class is online. It's a class on how to find, pick, play, and professional bearish gaps. And I'm doing a New York City Marathon package. Look at that view. I took that picture. Anyways, the package I'm running is going on through today. And it just, I've been running it for the last week. I know we had the webinar, but I'm offering to people in case you're here, if you think you wanna sign up, it's it's the combo. It includes the Golden Gap course, the Trends course for $74.99, and it includes the Options course free. It includes one year of the room and one year of the Gap Options newsletter. I was running this for a week. I just happened to have this webinar planned, but this does expire today. Again, think about what you're doing with investing your money. Think about the things that I said about what's going on in your head. You've got to stay motivated. And again, you have to think about the ideas that I talked to you about today. Save up, Douglas, I hear you saying, save up if you want to, if you want to take the class and hopefully you can do it soon. Um, I don't do Forex. It's not your fault, Douglas. It's just, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta jump to it. You gotta hop, skip to it. I'll say one last thing. I'll already go. Remember what I said. This, this moment in time, today, November 2023, right now, 602, 
this is it. This is your moment in time. We were here today together. You learned something from me. Hopefully you'll take something away from it. If you're interested in more information, email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. And please, please, please be careful trading the rest of the week. Very cool. Thank you, Melissa. And that's Melissa at